You are watching Chandni Krishnan on National News. Our aim is to bring you a balanced summary of the key stories of the week and not just the one or two sensational stories that air in mainstream channels. So do watch till the end and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Nagas will never be part of Indian Union, says Twingalenk Muiva of the National Socialist Council, NSCN of Nagaland. Asking for a new interlocutor in the place of Governor R. N. Ravi, the NSCN has reiterated its demand for a separate constitution and flag. The Nagas' relationship with the Government of India is complicated, as complicated as the Nagas themselves with their 16 major tribes and even more sub-tribes with their own distinct language and practices. Many attempts at peace have been thwarted over the years. There has been bitter violence between Nagas and the Indian Army. Meanwhile, with the NSCN dragging its feet, the government of India has reached out to other Naga groups, which seem to be more open to an amicable solution to the issue. This step by the centre has served to also reduce the political mileage of NSCN. The Prince Editor-in-Chief Shekhar Gupta has in his programme cut the clutter, called the demand for a Naga tribal parliament a utopian idea. Actor Sushant Singh Rajput's untimely demise has opened a veritable Pandora's box of controversies. The latest is not exactly a controversy, but a disturbing peek into a dystopian future where fake predominates the scene in social media. Mumbai police have reportedly discovered more than one and a half lakh fake social media accounts controlled by a bot that has been systematically trotting out negative tweets about the Maharashtra government and Mumbai police in connection with investigations into the actor's death. A press release by the police states that many of these accounts seem to be originating from outside India and use proxy servers to evade detection by law enforcement agencies. Repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth is a law of propaganda and a bot which can reliably tweet 5 million tweets a month in any language is the commercial tool that fulfills the purpose of the propaganda machine. The big question is, Whose is the face behind this and what is their objective? When business is on your mind, you are on our mind. Sarovar Hotels and Resorts. India and Nepal relations thawing after the map dispute. In a signal that India is ready again to resume warm ties with Nepal after an official freeze, Indian Army Chief General Manoj Mukund Naravne is set to travel to Kathmandu. He is visiting on invitation by his counterpart, General Purna Chandra Thapa, and will be given the honorary rank of the commander of the Nepal Army, following with past tradition of reciprocal honorary ranks between the countries. Interestingly, despite the political and diplomatic distancing, the armies of the two countries have remained friendly throughout the period, making it tough for the Nepali government to get too close to Beijing. Also, the government of India has maintained all the ongoing assistance projects and outreach efforts to the people of Nepal during this entire period. The Supreme Court upholds litigants' right to know the reasons behind pronounced verdicts. The court had already established guidelines 19 years ago for high courts and trial courts to be prompt in giving the reasons behind judgments. However, a bench of the Bombay High Court recently violated the guidelines when it pronounced a judgment on the 21st of January, but withheld the reasons with the cryptic statements that reasons would follow for almost nine months before finally providing the litigant with the detailed judgment. The Supreme Court has categorically said that this violates the right to life of the litigant. Gujar protests continue as a faction of the community blocks railway tracks. The Gujars have been agitating since 2007 for a quota in education and jobs in a special category. Although they were given 5% reservation thrice, this was struck down by the High Court for crossing the limit of 50% set by the Supreme Court. The agitating faction is also asking for the backlog to be filled in for OBC reservations. 
More than a dozen trains have been diverted on the Delhi-Mumbai railway line and the Agra-Jaipur route bus service has been discontinued due to the ongoing agitations. When business is on your mind, you are on our mind. Sarovar Hotels and Resorts Several standalone hotels in India yet to reopen. Others shutting down again after a brief reopening. The hospitality sector in India has been one of the hardest hit in the aftermath of COVID-19 lockdowns and travel restrictions. Many hotels which relied on overseas clientele do not expect matters to improve anytime soon as non-resident Indians and foreign nationals are less likely to make discretionary trips for quite some time. The Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Association of India has written to Prime Minister Modi asking for an industry-specific relief package to prevent the collapse of the sector and warned of the likelihood of a mass shutdown by 40% to 50% restaurants and 30 to 40% of hotels if support is not extended in time. It's a proud moment for India and Kerala as Priyanka Radhakrishnan becomes New Zealand's first ever Indian origin minister. Priyanka is Minister for Diversity, Inclusion and Ethnic Communities, Minister for the Community and Voluntary Sector and Associate Minister for Social Development and Employment. She was inducted along with four others into Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern's rewarmed and in Ardern's own words, incredibly diverse cabinet. Priyanka was born in India and her family hails from Paravur in Ernakulam. Kerala's own Minister for Health, Social Welfare and Women and Child Development, KK Shailaja, and Thiruvananthapuram MP Shashi Tharoor took to Twitter to congratulate Priyanka. The most fascinating water world on earth, the great backwaters, Kerala. S.K. Yadav, the judge who delivered the historic Babri demolition verdict, has been refused security by the Supreme Court. Yadav had been handling the Babri Masjid case since 2015, and though he was due to retire in 2019, his tenure was extended by the court to allow hearing of the case to continue. He had delivered the final judgment, acquitting all the people accused, and stated that merely giving a provocative speech was not enough to prove guilt. The names included L.K. Advani, Murli Manohar Joshi, Kalyan Singh and Uma Bharti, among others. Due to the sensitive and high-profile nature of the case, the former judge had asked for security to continue for him, but the request has been turned down by the Supreme Court. And that is everything in this episode. Thank you so much for watching. We would love to hear from you. Tell us how we are doing in the comments below. Please watch our other programs and do share with your friends and family. Stay safe and we'll see you again next time.